Hello everyone. So today I have a little colouring book haul for you. So these are three colouring books that I've got just recently. So what I'm going to do is go through each one of them now. So the first book here that I'm going to go through is Johanna Bassford's latest colouring book and that one is Johanna's Christmas. So obviously it's a Christmas themed colouring book and I've actually been wanting a Christmas themed book for quite a while and when I found out she was releasing this one I was very much looking forward to it. So I'm very excited about having this now. I'm glad it's released and obviously also we're getting closer to Christmas so it's going to be more in the mood for colouring these kinds of things in. So it has a really nice front cover here and then to go through it open it up and even on the inside here this kind of design when you open it up even this I really like it's really cute I think that in itself is also be kind of cute to colour in but what this book is as well this is one sided all the way through so it's kind of different to most of the other books that she's done apart from the more special edition ones I'm going through here and each page as well is made so you can tear them out easily. So it is made to basically colour them in. You can obviously also tear them out before you colour them in. But so the one sided, unlike most of the colouring books, we can tear them out and then use them as actual artworks or use them in other projects. So I think that is a really nice added feature. But this is the first one here. So everything is also obviously Christmas themed. And the one sided with the main designs, but on each page you still have kind of a back side of a page so you have different designs throughout on the back sides of the pages and actually those designs themselves I think are really cute as well and be kind of they would be fun to colour in if they were actual colouring pages. Nice Christmas tree. It's just a really nice style and there as well the back of it is just loads of presents. I think those are really cute as well. But then some places you can see here you kind of have two back pages which you think was a bit weird but that's because even though the individual pages and single pages you still kind of get double spread pages as well like in most of the other colouring books. They're not physically obviously attached because they still tear individual pages out but if say you wanted to use them to display them you could always tear them out individually but then put them together in a frame or something so that would still work. You can see it goes together there, so it's kind of a double page, this, and there's a few more of them as well. Nice gingerbread house. Really cute polar bear. Polar bears are one of my favourite animals. So you get lots of different types of designs again, like in her other books. Some that are kind of patterns. And then some that are more characters or scenes. And again, you can see the backs there always. Then again, you have, because obviously you have the backside on both pages, you then get another double page here. Also, you don't have to obviously use them as double pages because they tear out individually, like I said, but they just go together, so you could use them together. So I think that's kind of a cool idea. So you basically have both options and a whole page, really cute as well. So there's really lots of things you could do with this, obviously you could keep it as a book if you want to, but if you do want to tear them out you could use them just as kind of artwork, put them on the walls, in frames, frame them up or just in frames having them standing around, you can use them as cards in a way, you use parts of them as cards or any other kind of design or project you can add them to make nice presents as well I think again the double page, I really like this, it's really cute it's just a really kind of cosy homey feel about this I think you just imagine a whole scene in it because like I said using it as presents for instance I think it's really personal because obviously you spent a lot of time colouring something in and then maybe you put them in a frame and use them as a present. So I think they'll be kind of nice. Nice clock. So different things, just Christmas scenes, Christmas plant, flowers, animals. And again, like I said, a few different designs on the back I think are really cute. 
But this is really nice as well. It's quite different. Again, kind of a double page spread, but you don't have to use them together. My idea, I thought would be kind of nice with this, is obviously tear them out to the individual, but what could be really fun as well to then maybe use as a present or for yourself, is colour them in and have like a really long frame that would obviously fit these, have these on each end and then have like a picture in the middle with these on each end of it, whether it's a picture of family or something. So they would be like in the middle and this would be the decoration on the end. So you have like just a really long picture where obviously there's a personal touch with having coloured these in. So I think that's a really cute idea. Some more birds. And with this one as well, by the way, because in most, if not all, the other colouring books that she's done, she has these little treasure hunts. There's also one of them in this. Not quite the same as much, but it's to find little robins spread throughout. So, getting towards the back, another double one that works really nicely together. And obviously you can add loads of stuff to the background yourself as well. And at the back you have these test pages so depending what medium you want to use you can test on here before you actually use any of the designs to make sure it works I think that's a really cool idea as well I'm not I've not personally seen many coloring books that do that and then they're on the back again so that's the Christmas themed coloring book now really I'm looking forward to coloring into this so this is the next coloring book here that I got recently this I'm also very excited about because this is kind of part of a series of books that are some of my favourite that I've found. So as far as I'm aware there's three so far in this series, this is the latest one and there's now a complete collection, obviously until they release more if they do. So I have a few favourites as themes you could say. So this is one of my favourite series of books. Johanna Bestford is one of them as well and then also I like Mila Marotta's books a lot. I like other ones but those are kind of my favourite ones where I like to pretty much get all of them and get full collections of them because this is really nice to have all the different options. So this one, this series here specifically, this one is the aquarium and these are marine creatures to colour in. Now this is the third one that I'm aware of in this series. The other one, one of them is animal portraits. That's the first one I got actually as a present and that's how I found out about these. Um, where it says lots of different animals but it's portraits of them and then there's also one where it's birds which also is really beautiful. So I'm very much looking forward to this as well. I really like all these books and they have, you can see the front page, it's really beautifully, beautifully done. There's loads of different colouring but it's kind of a bit metallic finish to it. But then to go through it, also quite big books actually, so I think the books themselves are really beautiful. So there we go. So this is obviously going to be all kind of sea creatures you could say. And I just really like the style of these. So you're going to have different fish, different kinds of fish. Seahorse, obviously. And what you'll find as well, these are single-sided, so it would help being able to use, say, different mediums if you want it to. And I just really feel like these, kind of this style, these designs, they just a lot of personality in each and every one. That's what I really like about them as well. But on each one you can see there's kind of some background coloured in. And I know some people don't like that but I actually think it's really good for this because it really can just, you can just leave it as it is so just focus on colouring the actual animals. Or you could use the background as inspiration to what to do with the rest of the background. Because then obviously that gives you an idea what would fit really nicely. So I think, I personally think it's a good thing because it's done in a pretty neutral way. There's not overpowering, but at the same time it just gives you that little bit of inspiration what to do with the rest if you want to do anything. You can see loads of different kinds here. And obviously, I feel the style of this as well is either you can colour it in pretty realistically. I feel it warrants that with this style or you could do it quite colourful and just kind of how you want to. A bit like the front page and that was. But that again is obviously completely up to you. I'm a little bit doubtful about which one I want to go but I might just mix it up. Some of them a bit more realistic colours, some of them a bit more 
just colourful because they are quite detailed but you don't necessarily have to colour all that detail in as you can see because you could also just do more overall colouring and then just have the detail be the patterning in it you don't have to sit and colour in every single little piece of it separately so I do really like the style of this and I also think with it being fish themed it's a bit more inviting to use different colours as well while still keeping it somewhat natural so obviously these would be natural to think orange in it and obviously the background as well colourful the same with the bird one I also think is quite inviting to do more quite colourful because you can find a lot of birds that are very colourful in nature so that wouldn't necessarily not be sticking to natural way of the colouring by doing it colourful so you can see loads of different kinds here it's not just kind of all fish or the same type or anything it's very different And I think they've all got a lot of personality. And like I said, you can maybe kind of tell is they are quite big books. There's the biggest colouring books out of the ones that I have, the actual size of them. But in a way that's kind of nice because it makes you feel even more special in a way. Obviously you don't want it to be too big. Like there's how much personality has that got. I think it's really cute, just the eyes, it's almost like it's looking at you. But all the others, they're exactly the same size. But just the whole feel of the books themselves, they just seem and feel really nice. And the beautiful books just to have anyway, because of the front page. And So these are the other two that I was talking about. I really do like all of them. In the back, you see a bit more inspiration. That's again a lot more colourful than say being natural, but it still really works. So you could really do whatever you want to. But then that's this one here, and then the last one out of these three here is also a book that I've kind of had my eye on for a while, and I finally caved and got it because it just quite appeals to me. So it's all Celtic designs, and obviously still a colouring book, and I've just always had. A bit of a weakness for Celtic inspired designs, whatever it's in. I just always thought there's something really beautiful about it. So this is going to be just loads of different Celtic designs in different ways and also kind of with different meanings. So going through it here you can see what kind of style it is. So you're going to have lots of different images like this with all this Celtic inspired design but then You've also got writing on them, which I'm taking as being kind of the meaning of them. What it's meant to kind of symbolise or stand for. I'm going to double page spread here. And I can just imagine the different results to be able to get with all this Celtic designs incorporated with different colours and because obviously you have so much that's kind of interwoven and overlapping and going under and over that could be really interesting to colour in with some thing, things like shadows and really giving it a lot of depth I think so it's definitely something I'm looking forward to quite different and you can see still descriptions of like I said what I assume they mean or symbolise and some quite very familiar Celtic style designs And obviously for some of them as well, you could even add more to them yourself if you want to, some more detail. Something a bit snake-like, you can add maybe scales or something, like here, dragons or whatever. So you can even add to it as well if you want to. Kind of make it as simple or as intricate as you want to. I'm still getting that Celtic feel. Quite striking double page spread here. 
can quite see this being very therapeutic to colour in as well because obviously the style of it but also in a way it's quite repetitive but in a good way which quite often tends to be quite therapeutic. But at the same time there's so much to them that you're not necessarily going to get bored with one because like I said it's all interwoven and everything built on the Celtic style. Quite a lot finer here than some of the other ones. So quite a few different type images. I mean, just these two from each other are quite different as well from each other. You can really see like here for example what I said with weaving under and over how much you can achieve by adding shadows to the ones that go under and things like that it could really be interesting. Also a good way I think to practice for colouring in. I do think that with colouring books in general it's a great, great way to practice. And there's a lot of designs in here like you can see obviously it's double page so you got designs on all pages, both sides, which obviously means you get a lot more designs than if they were single paged. The clover there as well, typical Celtic shamrock. Obviously that will probably mean a bit limited for what mediums you could use. I probably wouldn't use markers or anything, but I tend to not really do that anyway in colouring books. Kind of just stick with my colouring pencils. And they're very different from each other. And you still got your descriptions there. Tree of Life design. You could really make that interesting as well. I'm getting towards the back here. This little, almost like a star. Owl, wisdom, so that fits. And then right at the end. So you can see the style. It's quite kind of striking and full on, but there's also some more detailed things. And obviously depending how much you put into it. Really nice designs here on the back and the front. So that's what this book looks like. A really nice colouring book as well. Very different from anything else that I have already. So this was just a walkthrough of a few of the colouring books that I got just recently here. So these three, the Johanna Basford, the Celtic one, and then the Sea Life one. So obviously can't wait to add these to my collection and start using them properly. The obvious one at the moment is probably obviously the Johanna Basford Christmas one, because Christmas is coming up pretty soon. So to get more in the Christmas spirit and it's kind of happening a bit naturally probably going to have a go at this one quite soon so I really hope you enjoyed this haul here and thank you very much for watching